we're going to talk about job costing and the need for predetermined overhead rates. So we're going to talk about what are predetermined overhead rates, how do they change costs, and how do they change profits. So let's get started. Up to now, we have put actual overhead into work in process along with material and labor. In fact, we didn't even say it was actual. We just said this is how much overhead was. It didn't bring it to your attention that this was actual overhead. But that's what it was. When we get into job costing so that every item is not exactly the same, and we have to have a separate work in process account for each job to keep track of the costs in individual jobs because they differ. So look how different job one is from job two. So that first line is uh, materials, the second line is labor, the third line is overhead, and overhead has not been assigned yet to the individual jobs. So we need a methodology for figuring out how much overhead should go to each job because overhead is typically a shared cost. So the cost of the building, well, it doesn't really belong to any individual job, whereas that material, that labor was working on that particular window or that particular boat or that particular batch of whatever it is that the customer wanted. So we need a methodology for spreading overhead to the jobs, and that's where the predetermined overhead rate comes in. The predetermined overhead rate is created by an estimated overhead and an estimated activity. And some people call the estimated activity the allocation base or the cost driver, but it's the same thing. You pick a particular activity that you believe is most related to the overhead costs. So if overhead costs are mostly labor related, then some labor measure would be the denominator, maybe direct labor hours or direct labor cost. If the overhead is mostly related to moving materials, maybe the estimated activity would be pounds of material move. If the estimated overhead is mostly about forklift costs, then maybe hours of forklift use would be the activity. But we usually pick some activity that's as related to overhead as, as you can find. So let's put in some numbers. Let's say that the budgeted overhead is 50000 so there's your estimated overhead, manufacturing overhead. And let's say it was really related to labor costs, supporting the labor, so supervision and 401k and the lunchroom and so forth. Okay. Um, so here you would divide that out and you would get $1.25 per dollar of direct labor. That would be your predetermined overhead rate. It is also okay to express it as a percent that overhead is 125% of direct labor cost. That's fine too. So what are we going to do with this predetermined overhead rate? We're going to use it to populate our T accounts, our work in process for each of the jobs. So let's see what that might look like. Here are the jobs again without any overhead assigned to them yet. They're waiting for their overhead assigned. So we would use this 125 and we would apply it to the second number which is the direct labor in each of the four accounts. So each of those direct labor amounts would be multiplied times 1.25 or 125 percent and so the fifty dollars would go to job one and so forth and if you want to check to be sure you're following along just freeze this frame and apply to each of the four and you should get ten thousand six seventy five all right so we applied six hundred seventy five to those four jobs now we compare what was actually spent to what we applied. And here I'm just giving you the number. Actual overhead was 11,000 and we applied 10,675. So did we apply too much or not enough? We didn't apply enough. And that's called underapplied. And what do we do with this difference? We do not go back and fix what was assigned to the job. At the end of the period, after all the jobs have gotten overhead assigned to them, any difference between actual and applied, and there's almost always a difference because the predetermined overhead rate is just based on estimates at the beginning of the period, we would adjust the difference just directly to cost of goods sold. So here, uh, we would have a, a separate account where we would, we would keep track of actual, which was 11000 and then the three applied overheads to went to each of the four jobs. And so here, what we applied was not enough, leaving us with a dangling debit in the overhead account. And the, what you would clear that out by crediting overhead, 
and debit and cost of goods sold. So when you have underplied, not enough went into the working process, therefore not enough is in finished goods, therefore not enough flowed through to cost of goods. And so here, by adjusting the overhead and putting it in cost of goods sold, you are increasing cost of goods sold uh, to compensate for the underapplied that was put in worker process that arrived at finished goods and finally got to cost of goods sold. Let's change the data. What if actual was actually 10,000 and not 11? Now what? Did you over or under apply? You over applied. So what would it look like now in the various T accounts? Well, we'd still have the same amount applied to the four jobs, but now we have over applied, and so we have this dangling credit. So we would clear that out by debiting the overhead account and crediting cost of goods sold. So when we have put too much into the jobs and too, too much goes into finished goods and too much goes into cost of goods sold, we back it out at the uh, cost of goods sold line. We don't go back and fix the actual job cost. We just put do it as one entry at the end of the period directly to cost of goods sold.